Michael Bradley here from The Undertones and this is a photograph taken whenever I had bought a brand new Rickenbacker 4001 bass. I wish I still had it, unfortunately I sold it in a moment of madness. We started in the band and none of us could really play. I could just about strum a few chords. John could do the same. Bully had bongos, Bully didn't have a drum kit when we started. It was absolutely great fun because, you know, if you talk to any teenager now and you'd say, you know, would you like to be in a band and would you like to appear on Top of the Pops and would you like to make records? And you'd go, yes, of course. And it happened to us. Miraculously, it happened to us. I would never have said that I grew up in a musical family, even though my father was a very good accordion player and he played in a Cayley band. In Derry, everybody was in a band, it seemed. Uh, you know, show bands almost started in Derry. You would have seen guys, you know, who would, would have gone away in a, a minibus or in cars overnight and, you know, drive back in the early hours of the morning from playing in venues all over Ireland. Also grew up with the fish every Easter week. Hundreds, literally hundreds, if not thousands, of school children would be entered into singing competitions and verse speaking competitions and drama competitions. Irish dancing, of course, as well. Fergal Sharkey famously was one of the best fish champions ever until the undertones ruined his career. So, yeah, we grew up in Derry, and Derry is a city of song. We had an American communications base here right up until 1977. So, uh, from talking to people who would have been in bands uh, a wee bit older than me, they would have said that they would have gone to America, or not, they would have gone to the American base, which is almost like going to America, and they would have uh, heard American records over there. Hear my song, Joseph Locke was always a name that was there in the background. He made records. He must have been the first dairy man to have a proper recording contract. Come to me. But I love the story as well, that whenever he came back, he used to come back uh, when he was successful, and he would come back in his car. You know, he had, he, he had a, a, obviously a nice car, whenever people in Derry didn't have cars, and he would go down Craig and Terrace, where he lived, and all the wains in the street would come out, and he would give them lifts, he would give them runs in the car. My first memory of Phil Coulter is whenever I was 1967, I must have been eight, eight years old. My sister came in one day into the house and says, right, there's a, there's a song competition and we all have to vote for, for the song which is going to represent the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest. I was handed a stack of blank postcards, that's how you voted, and I had to write on, pop it on a string, and I must have done, I can't remember, I must have done maybe 20, 10 or 20, and my brothers and sisters did the same. We all filled them in because the message was out in Derry in 1967. There's a local guy who's in with a chance of the song getting through the Eurovision Song Contest. String. Dana grew up across the gardens from us in Craigan. Our back garden uh, met her back garden, the Browns, over, they lived over in Greenwalk, we lived in Craigan Broadway. At the time as well, you see, I was about 10, and Dana was 16, and when you're 10, 16's old. <laughs> and we were in a run with Eurovision, of course, congratulations, nearly won, Puppet and String did one. That was 67, 68, and by 70, Dana was on singing, and we thought it was great. I remember her homecoming, the jet flying in to Derry and so on. Whenever we did uh, the Sons and Daughters concert in Derry at the start of the Year of Culture, she was on stage and she sang it along with an orchestra. And I remember standing there during the sound check and watching it and thinking, this is absolutely brilliant. When you're growing up in Derry, there are some names that you have heard from, from you can remember from your first memory. One of them is Gay McIntyre for me. Nat King Cole, apparently, whenever Gay was in England, and Nat King Cole's son wanted him to, to play in his band. Gay says no. He said, he didn't, I think he didn't want to travel, he wanted to go back to Derry. Now, there's a familiar theme for Derry musicians. Brona Gallagher, we, we thought she was an actress, or an actor. 
and now of course Brona is a, is a singer with two great great albums to her name Bridie Mons Watson who goes by the name of Soap she's just very very original talent we have a band called Little Bear who are being played in Radio 1 at the moment a guy called Best Boy Grip Owen O'Callaghan great singer great pianist great songwriter At the moment, I think Derry is at its most productive ever when it comes to producing music and musicians. Physically, Derry's got a lot better, but musically, it's got a lot better as well. I, I would always think that if the undertones were starting now, we wouldn't have a chance. This is one of my favourite photographs of the undertones. I think it's my favourite photograph because the clash are in it as well. We look as if we could have just stepped out of a boogies in Derry. The clash looked like they could have just stepped out of Hollywood Boulevard. The thing about being in the undertones as well was that you know whenever we weren't doing anything in, in England or in America, we all went home. It was almost like we went home for our tea. Some people says that damaged your career, but I don't think it did at all. I think it kept us uh, kept us very sensible. Look, it's very heartwarming for me, and you know very uh, complimentary, I suppose, to the band that we seem to be one of the faces of the Year of Culture 2013. Our ugly bakes, as we would say. 